Nadine's Trailer Park Terror. Take one. We moved into the trailer park in April of 1991. We moved an awful lot when my husband was in the military. The trailer park was nice. It was affordable. It was clean. The people were military much like our family. And we fit in well. The trailer would be the family's home until housing could be arranged on the nearby military base. Usually when you're waiting for government housing on post, it can take up to 27 months. So we thought about maybe two years we'd have to live in the trailer park. I was very young at the time when we moved into the trailer park. I remember being at the end of the row, the big field, the trees. I played outside during the day. At night, we mostly were inside. If you look out the window, you would see a big field. And then there was a wooded tree line. The tree line, I never liked it. It just seemed off to me. I just never liked the woods. It always felt cold. It just kind of, I don't know, it made you feel eerie. I do remember the forest. It was something that I generally avoided. The unnerving sensations would soon become all too real. Shane and I, we would go outside and he would play ball, you know, normal kid stuff. This one particular day we went out and the neighbor's dog was lying there. At first I thought it was sleeping, but the dog was dead. The dog we found had actually belonged to one of our neighbors, but they were never home. We decided that we were gonna bury the dog next to the woods because we didn't feel it was right to just leave the dog there. I buried the dog across the field from our trailer, along the wood line. I dug a hole about two feet deep, thinking that would be enough to thwart most small creatures from digging it up. We were outside and Shane was playing. I had noticed that there was something odd about the woods. I had gone up and the hole was empty. The dog was gone. After we had buried the dog and it had been dug up, you would see something at the edge of the woods. You would see these glowing red eyes, like blood red eyes. It appeared to be some type of animal or creature, maybe eight feet tall. This thing was staring right at you. You could just feel it boring down on you like it was watching you all the time. It was terrifying. I will never forget those eyes. Spirits like to intimidate. Spirits like to show themselves and scare the living. Not all spiritual entities are humanoid figures. Most of the time, entities can morph into different shapes, different forms, different creature-like animals, and they can wreak havoc on your life. It got to the point where each night, Nadine would see the red eyes hovering in the distance, and she was convinced they were the eyes of someone or something. Don't move. Which only heightened her protective instincts. I would never let my kid out of my sight. You would go to take out the garbage or go out to go to the car. I always had to know where he was because I was afraid. I didn't know what it was. 
I was afraid if I took my eyes off of him, something would happen. Shane! 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 She was more protective of me. She liked to keep me close by, within earshot, within sight. But Nadine's fears would not go unfounded as the terror kept escalating. I'm pretty much a skeptic. I kind of thought maybe Nadine was embellishing a little bit on what she saw. So my first impression was, okay, your imagination's getting away from her. It was about two or three weeks after Nadine had first seen it that she was able to show it to me and pinpoint the eyes in the woods. I was expecting something low to the ground, some sort of canine, uh, perhaps a wolf, until it moved and you could see the mass of it. I had gotten my rifle and started loading it. I was expecting something that could be explained away. And I had no explanation for this. When Nadine Smith and her family moved into a trailer park, they were unaware that their home was not as tranquil as it seemed. But not long after, a strange being began haunting them. And I had no explanation for this. Whatever this was, animal, beast, you could hear like growling and grunting, just these awful noises. I had my rifle and started crossing the field. I got out there and it was gone. Could find no evidence whatsoever. As the unexplained sightings kept intensifying, Nadine went in search for answers. I decided to ask some of the neighbors about it. And I got the oddest reactions. Hey, hey. I just wanted to ask if you knew much about the wildlife around here. Have you ever seen anything bigger? When I went to ask one neighbor, she refused to speak to me. Um, no. She just closed her door. And she wouldn't talk to me after that. I noticed that one of my neighbors had actually moved. And it, it appeared as though they had actually moved in the middle of the night. And we noticed that was happening a lot. The neighbors kind of came and went, some freaked out by whatever this creature was. I started asking questions. I started asking why they left. Why was everyone leaving so quickly? And I was told each one of them had left because something had happened to them, where a dog or a wolf or something had tried to attack them. I tried to get into their mobile home. And I saw those red eyes inside a vacant lot trailer staring at me. I realized it was actually watching me. It was real and it was not going to go away. I was now scared. I didn't know what I was dealing with. Was it a ghost? Was it a demon? I didn't know. And the terror continued as Shane began to have horrible nightmares. Mom! It 
It was getting to be pretty common that Shane would wake up at night, at least two to three times a week. Bad dream again? I did have recurring nightmares every time it was the same. Shane would wake up in the middle of the night screaming. He would be panicked. We would tell him it was just a nightmare. In the beginning, she would just say that they were nightmares and that I should just try to get back to sleep. I'm right here if you need me. But Shane's parents would soon find out how overpowering his nightmares had become. We got called by the school principal about pictures that he had been drawing in art class. And they were all the same picture. It was a big thing with red eyes, and, and he drew teeth on them, and the teeth had blood dripping off of them. It was really disturbing. I drew it repeatedly over and over again. It was a big deal to me. One night, I was having this nightmare. I saw a big black form outside my window. I was scared. I was legitimately scared. We ran into his room. What? What? He was just looking at the window. I saw those same red eyes. It had black and brown hair, fur. It was like an upright walking wolf. I legitimately felt like we were being stopped. I felt like it was coming for us. Go, go, go. And it scared me to death. With more questions than answers, Nadine was determined to get to the root of the mystery. We went to the library and they told us there was a legend of skinwalkers. And I had never heard of a skinwalker before. A skinwalker is a type of creature that was once human. They can assume the forms of animals like foxes or wolves. Skinwalkers are considered very dangerous. They have evil intentions. They are connected to illness, bad luck, and even death. When Nadine told me it could be a skinwalker, I did not dismiss that theory. Because in my life, I've seen things that you just can't explain. We found out there was quite a bit of research behind it, but we had no idea how to protect ourselves. With John away for work, Nadine refused to be left alone in the trailer and asked friends to keep her company at night. I asked my friend if she could come down. And we heard these noises outside. Did you hear that? Yeah. Like growling and low guttural types of noises. And we went to the door and we both looked out and up at the edge of the woods, it was standing there looking at us. Head to toe, upright walking, black wolf with red eyes. Nadine Smith and her family were being terrorized by a vicious beast. And the horror became all too real when Nadine was attacked in her own home. It was really angry. And it wanted in. The trailer started to shake. I don't know how you make a, a 14 by 80 mobile home move. Whatever this was, it was literally shaking the whole place. My 
friend started panicking and she said, we need to call the police. And, and I thought, what are the police gonna do? <laughs> we were standing there and the door just flew open. We thought, this is how we're gonna die. And we both looked out and there was nothing. It was gone. There was nothing there. We were terrified. We knew that there was no way to get out of this except to leave. After the trailer was attacked, I was more concerned with the safety of my family. How far would a creature go? Or how far is this going to go? Terrified of what might happen next, Nadine and John decided to move out as fast as they could. We were going, we have to go, we have to go, we have to go. I mean, we were all panicked. Come on, come on, hurry. We left stuff in the house. We just wanted out so badly. We left stuff and we never went back. Even the day we left, I saw the eyes in the woods. There it was. I loaded them all in the truck. hit the road, never look back. I still don't like to be out near the woods at night, anywhere. It changed me forever.